Bypass Publishing presents Psychology in the Fast Lane Difficult Topics Explained Neural Communication Synaptic Transmission Considering that any given cell might have 1500 synapses with other cells, the reality of neural communication is rather complex. But we'll start with a single synapse where two cells communicate. The process of synaptic transmission is simply the conveyance of information across the space between cells. The transmission part is the conveyance of information. The synapse is the space between cells. So the individual elements that we need to understand here are the two communicating cells and the space between them. The two cells are called the presynaptic cell and the postsynaptic cell. The space, of course, is called the synapse. And it's not really empty space, but it's filled with fluid and chemicals. Now the presynaptic cell is the one that's transmitting the message, and it houses structures and processes that allow it to send a signal. The postsynaptic cell is the one that's receiving the message, and it houses structures and functions that allow it to respond to a signal. Now at the synapse, the axon terminal of the presynaptic cell lines up to the dendrite of the postsynaptic cell. So in order to communicate, the cell must make a chemical transmitter, or a neurotransmitter. There's a separate podcast specifically about neurotransmitters. Now usually the making of a neurotransmitter is accomplished in either the cell body or in the axon terminal itself. This decision is constituted in the action potential. At the moment of action potential generation, the synaptic cell has essentially made the decision to communicate with the postsynaptic cell. The membrane of the synaptic cell contains a specific type of switch that is sensitive to the action potential and cranks up the release machinery. They only open when the action potential threshold is reached. Now within the synapse, not a lot really happens. However, it's important to keep in mind that the action is all basic diffusion. As your high school chemistry teacher would explain, diffusion is just the movement of ions down a concentration gradient. So when the presynaptic cell releases the chemical, it's highly concentrated, and the individual molecules don't like to be so close, so as they, as they go along, they spread out from one another. The first thing that's got to happen when the chemical makes it over is that it has to find a receptor or a target that is sensitive to it. Receptors receive this chemical message, and they essentially act as locks, and they're activated by their keys, which is the chemicals in the message. When the neurotransmitter is bound, the chemical shape of the receptor is altered, and then the receptor initiates another process that changes the state of the postsynaptic cell, which is how the message is received by the postsynaptic cell. Now keep in mind, one single neurotransmitter molecule can potentially cause wildly different changes to occur in each different postsynaptic cell. The effect that the neurotransmitter molecule has on the postsynaptic cell is all based on the reaction of the receptor. After the message is received, the neurotransmitter molecules basically pop off the receptor's binding sites and begin floating around in the synapse again. Sometimes they find another binding site, or sometimes the neurotransmitter molecules are pumped back into the presynaptic cell through a process called reuptake. Sometimes neurotransmitters are degraded by enzymes floating around in the synapse. But as far as the effects that the chemical message has on the postsynaptic cell, like I said, it depends on the receptor. Now from there, the nitty gritty details get really complicated and honestly go far beyond what our discussion requires today. But for now, we can simplify all of the effects that one cell can have on another by categorizing their ultimate influence as either excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory effects are those that increase the probability that the postsynaptic cell will fire an action potential. Inhibitory effects are those that decrease the probability and note that when the current through the receptor is positive, the resulting change is an excitatory result. When the current is negative, the resulting change is inhibitory.